All right, so the PVI, the V coax, V coax HDMI to coax modulator watch on any TV. I'm just gonna grab that thing out here. So here's the initial box it comes in. So full 1080p for video recording. Doesn't have a whole lot of info on the sides of it. Just has its uh, V cogs, the Mini Mod 2, which is this, the unit that this is for this modulator. I'm actually, I'm actually quite surprised how small the box is. Um, just uh, two pounds is what uh, Pure later said that it was, so it's not very big. Instruction manual. Go to the PVI support. Knowledge base tab. I imagine it's probably some sort of a PDF file. And this is it. This is the modulator. Uh, you know, I'm surprised. Here's, here's my hand. I'm actually. I thought this thing would be a much bigger, but uh, well. So, uh, yeah, okay. So interesting. So we we go for our ports and things. So. It has your RF in and out. Like for, you know, it seems ridiculous that this little thing is five freaking hundred dollars. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> high definition video, uh, digital video TV RF coax modulator. So this basically, essentially what this thing is, just to explain to the people, this is like a, a modulator, which what will do is it'll take your HDMI source and it will put it to a TV out. So here's the control pad and the and the instructions to it as a power supply, and it has a USB uh, port here. I just hold that up here. So there's a USB mini thing here. There's some sort of power port here thingy, and uh, yeah, it's, it's actually quite light for what it is. Actually, this is kind of nice, the nice thing. It's smaller than my satellite receiver. Uh, the neat thing is I, I think like I can even hide this behind my TV and uh, send my satellite receiver to the other TVs which is on which would be on my main TV and kind of hide this thing as I'm gonna play around with it for a bit okay so anyway look at the unit it has its buttons here uh, the V Cox mini mod 2 uh, has its arrow keys this is a display here uh, for the status of the box and so anyway I'll set it down there and there's another thing here, the power supply and cables thingy in here. Okay, so as I see, uh, these are like the clamps, if you want to clamp it to something. Um, that I believe they probably go in the sides. Yeah, there's probably little screws that comes with it. So that you can, uh, so you can stick it to a wall or whatever. Uh, obviously there'll be a power supply. It is an interesting looking connection on the power supply. So here's you know your regular wall wart. <laughs> and then there's this thing here, which I think looks kind of interesting from other other connections that I've seen before. Where I guess it goes there and it holds on there like that. And I'm just gonna actually put it together right now because I want to fire this thing up. I'm gonna connect an Android box up to it. And I'm going to fire it up and we'll uh, give it a test and see how it works with my little TV. So there's the power supply. All right, and that's about it that comes with it. It's uh, all right, so there's these little clamps here, which are in this box here. I'm just going to stick this I don't think I'll use these clamps, I don't think there's much reason for that. Um, so for the amount of money I paid for this thing, I'm a little bit disappointed on one thing. I'm disappointed on that I don't have an HDMI cable, and I don't have a uh, no HDMI cable uh, and no um, no manual. Just this thing here. I'm surprised at the size of this thing. That really blows me away. Like here's uh, my box cutter next to it. I don't know. Here's my satellite remote control. It's really not that big. It's just a little piece of kit, you know. It does uh, 
Uh, anyway, I'm going to try a few different devices. Try to fire this thing up, fire this thing up, and we'll see how it operates. And this woman, as you can see, she looks very, very happy to have her ATSC modulator. Like, that's the face of happiness when you have an ATSC modulator. And she's able to, you know, use her over-the-air channels. She looks so happy that she's able to use her over-the-air channels with her... Uh, her over-the-air channels with her local, you know, local source stuff and be able to have all that uh, and have her own master antenna system. I'm going to be that happy in a few minutes, hopefully. There we go. So I'm going to plug it in now. Alright, so I see it's come up. I see the PBI. Now, the TV is not going to do anything because I don't have it set up to any sort of... Uh, uh, set up yet. So PVI, so it originally comes off as QAM, so it's set for QAM right away. Name, and so I'm gonna get the camera kind of close to this display and we'll try to get a, a better view of it. Green went off, I'm just gonna, alright, QAM modulation. It's going out as a QAM uh, output, but I want to put it for UHF. All right, just to make a reference, I did change the resolution to 720, and I was able to get uh, the uh, um, audio to come through. Now, I have it on interlace. This is a progressive scan, so I'm going to try to see if I can switch that over from interlace to progressive uh, and see if that will make this thing work. Because right now, I'm not getting anything on the screen. One of the first things I've discovered is, okay, I've gotten this uh, no video on the input color thing. But connecting it to the TV so far, I couldn't get it to work. So I ran it through my old Homeworks box here. So I have the uh, cable running out and running into the Homeworks box there. And so I was able to scan the channel and find and make sure that video input was working. So for whatever reason, I'm not able to get it on with the TV's, this particular TV's tuner, which has been a problem people have complained about, that it doesn't work on all the TV there you can see that PVI box com. So I'm glad I've gotten this far. I can figure out and tinker with it a little bit on these settings here uh, using this box. Now ultimately I'd like to be able to get it to this TV, any TV, uh, without having to have a set top box. That's ideally. So hopefully we'll be able to figure that out. But now that I'm able to get this, I can at least tinker around with the video settings a little bit. Alright, so now I've uh, got my Android box running into here, and uh, so this is a, so this is sending HDMI to this thing here, and this thing here is sending the ATSC signal to this thing, but it's not able to be viewed in all um, TV formats. Uh, this TV, the tuner in this TV is not doing it, but the uh, Homeworks box is. So anyway, so I'm able to get the audio and video going through. I could probably play a video. Okay. So. So I've tweaked around with the settings. I just want to go under there. So in the advanced settings, I got... Um, now the tricky thing is to get this thing set to interlace to interlace. Or progressive. So I've been playing around with interlace. Now with interlace video... Now this video here is shot in progressive scan 1080p, not 1080i. Progressive scan video because most TVs, people don't realize, are progressive scan um, so you'll get the in the, the interlace blur and I just don't want that so I think I saw a freeze up there I don't know if it's this thing or it could be the this box here but as I said it's yeah I saw a few jumps in the video so we'll try to fix that up so I, I'm keep it in its native progressive scan okay so I tried another thing where I put HDMI and output it on my computer. And I got the sound settings uh, selected so that it's outputting sound to HDMI. So it's saying the HDMI out to the uh, ATA SC modulator here to the TV. It's going to the, here to the homeworks to the TV. Now, one thing I'm noticing is there is a bit of a delay. I can move this mouse over this window because it's one of my computer windows here. Where is that mouse there? Let's see if I can find it here. 
there. There is, but it's really delayed like by like a second or two. Yeah, I'm moving the mouse now and it takes a second or two. So I don't think this would be the type of thing a gamer, for a gamer like to, um, uh, so they could uh, have on the fly gaming because there is that delay. Definitely this thing's this thing here is encoding it, and then this machine here is decoding it and making it actually it's going analog. Uh, the picture quality should be a little bit better, but it's just that's the analog output just on this thing because this TV, this dying dying insignia type brand TV is just not working uh, for the signal. It scans it in, gets a 100% signal, but then there's no picture. And there is audio, but no picture on this TV. So, this uh, VE Cox Mini Mod 2, I just like, I just refer to this thing as my ATSC modulator. Uh, so, I just want to plug in right now, but just to show you the ports, the RF in, RF out, that's for if your master antenna goes out and has some sort of a, I don't know exactly what this USB thing is does, it maybe or it looks like a USB connection. It also has a PC port there. Um, so, um, after using this thing for, a, for uh, some time now, for a few days, I found I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying this piece of kit. I hope, $500, I hope this thing lasts a long time with the amount of money I paid for it. So, um, it's a great little device for transferring HDMI to coax. And say if you don't want to do ATSC, you can still do QAM and other modulations. Um, I'm going to go, and if there's more questions in the comments below, um, I can do a video, uh, maybe I can try to help you and explain that. So, I'm probably going to do more videos on this. Um, definitely, it's. Uh, it's something I've been drooling about, dreaming about for a long time. So to get this has been been a fun experience for me. Um, just to be able to... Uh, so one thing I've done is... Um, sometimes I, on satellite I have some very highly high bitrate stuff and my PVR uh, can't um, keep up to it like from some satellite feeds. So what I ended up doing was to down convert. I used this device. Um, which still, this does broadcast at a very high bit rate. Uh, so it, um, so I'm still getting a high bit rate from my hard drive. I'd like to maybe make it smaller files. But anyway, um, it's, uh, it's getting some uh, high bit rate, but I'm still able to record it with my one gigabyte, an old, I have had a one gigabyte, one gigabyte terabyte uh, drive for recording PVR stuff and all that. So I, I did connect it to my Allure Tech uh, over there. Box, I have the box right here. Yeah. So I connected it uh, to this thing here. This thing here, I want to point out, these uh, cheap Walmart uh, TV tuner things do pick up these things. Um, the one thing that was a disappointment is my Dykes TV did not. My HD Home Run was able to pick this up. Uh, but my HD home runs all flaked right out, but I was able to pick up uh, the programs, but I, I can stream from my satellite receiver to that without going through the HD home run, but I just wanted to see if the H, look at the video quality uh, and the bit rate of uh, what this was putting out. And it was putting out, puts out a pretty high bit rate. And if you want that, that's a good thing, but if you want to lower it, I haven't still figured out how to lower the bit rate yet. Um, so programming it is pretty straightforward. My biggest problem was when I started, I connected it to my Dykes TV and it didn't show up. It picked up the signal, but it wasn't showing the video. So I was messing around all around with the box. So that's one of the first things you want to do is when you plug it in, make sure you see the color bars. Uh, this thing will display color bars and it'll display the PVI graphic. You want to see that. Uh, that means it's working. To actually test this thing, you don't need to have a video source plugged in. It will show you the color bars without anything plugged into the HDMI. So just to make sure the thing is working, you can do that as well. So uh, this is my first impressions. So this is the video, just, you know, my first impressions of using this box that fits in the, hand, the palm of my hand. Um, definitely a cool piece of kit. Every, in my opinion, every TV should just have this, instead of having an HDMI output, it should have this and you can maybe select, even if it didn't have like a whole whack of frequencies, at least set like, kind of like what old TVs would do is analogs that would put out a channel two, two, three or four. I wish 
this technology, a few chips soldered together, you know, would would do that because then we wouldn't have to go through that and you can split it to as many TVs as you want with just a simple splitter. So it's great for that. Um, and I know someone's going to ask me, will this work wirelessly? It does, this doesn't transmit very far, but if you're just trying to send it from one room to the next with hooking a TV antenna to it, uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> Definitely will you want to keep your your uh, your cable sealed. You don't want to be leaking any RF. Um, but uh, so definitely try to keep your RF in. You know we're gonna be good. We're all gonna be doing that. So yeah, this is the VE Co Cox. I don't know how to pronounce this thing. Um, I, there's videos on their own YouTube channel telling you how to do this thing. Cool piece of kit. Uh, yeah. So let me know in the comments. I'll do more videos on this thing. Uh, Thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe.